Hello. Yes, sir. So how's it going? What's up? It's going all right, man. Where are you calling from? Me, I'm coming from Nova Scotia. Oh, really? Eh? Yeah. Oh. When was the last time you came down here? You know what? I was up there, was it last year? Oh, yeah, I forgot with, um, what's his name? I'm, I'm, I'm Carson Downey. Right on, yes. Yes, I did a thing up in a couple of places, Moncton and Fredericton, with a guy named Jim. What's big Jim? Jim, Jim from um, New Brunswick, man. Jim, he's a promoter. Guy, we had a big blues, uh, blues explosion thing that we were doing in a few places in, in down, down east. Oh. But uh, Miss Down East, man, we just got back from out west, as a matter of fact, uh, yesterday. And we're hanging out here for a couple of weeks, then we go to um, back to Europe for a month. Okay. When is there going to be a new album for Wild Teen the Spirit? Well, uh, the sooner the better. We don't know. We're hoping that uh, we're thinking of doing um, a live one, the next one, and a you know, DVD to match. <clears throat> Probably when we go, come back from Europe, we might, when we go to Europe in a couple of weeks, we are probably going to tape, do some taping and see if we can come up with one. But uh, the last one we did is only a month, a year old, Fender Bender. Do you have access to that one? Yes, I do believe I've got that one. Yes, that's the last one. And we still, uh, it's still hot. As a matter of fact, we just uh, just sold out of all our copies uh, out west in the last tour. And that's, that's what's been happening, so... Well, that's good. You know, when, when, when when stuff's going good like that, you don't want to just go. Well, you know, let's just do a new album. <laughs> you know, you yeah. want to supply supply and demand. So, it's definitely, there's a new one. I mean, I, I'm a creative creator, so uh, I'm constantly writing and coming up with new stuff. But I ain't uh, I ain't that hasty right now to just come out with a new album just for the sake of it. But uh, it's it's gonna be in the works. And as I say, like uh, we're hoping there's gonna be a live one. So. Yep, yep, yep. Who are your main influences? My main influences, man, life. Just life. Yes. You know, honestly. I mean, people people always think that, you know, because you're a guitar player, especially if you're black and you play a strat as Jimi Hendrix and blah, blah, blah. And, and honestly, before, before I even got into Jimi Hendrix, I was inspired by, I can just pull up, pull up any kind of, you know, life. I mean, I can hear like a saxophone. I love, I love free spirits. You know, a saxophone player just blowing the, you know, the hell out of his sax. I just, you know, I get inspired like that too. Obviously, I mean, there's guitar players too because I mean, I'm a guitar player. But uh, it's just a life situation, man. I just try to like be able to um, pull up, pull out, you know, all the stops from wherever I can. You know, if I'm walking down the street. On a gloomy day, and a beautiful woman says hi to me out of the blue. I'm, I want to pick up my guitar and go, woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. You probably heard of it, right? Mm-hmm. And in Trinidad, I mean, like growing up back there, you know, getting into music. We really didn't, I don't know, I just never got into influences. I mean, you, you, you pick up whatever you can, wherever you can, you know, like there's lots of steel drums and calypso and stuff like that, so you just pick up whatever you can. I remember, like, I never played jazz in my life, and I heard Wes Montgomery, and I just went, hey, I started singing Wes Montgomery jazz licks, and the next thing I'm into jazz. Mm-hmm. I can play jazz, right? So, but it's all a feeling, man. So how long you been playing guitar now? Um, I was in the womb, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my womb playing with my umbilical cord. Ah, uh-huh. that's uh-huh. original. Hey, and even when I take it a step further, I was playing with my gums, man. Yeah. Then I come and come out on the scene and I see this guy named Jimi Hendrix playing with his teeth. I'm going, what the? Why is he stealing my thunder? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I've been, um, I mean, I'm 40 few right now. 40 few. And uh, started, I mean, I started playing, as I said, music. It wasn't guitar, just playing steel drums and whatever instruments would would show up in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. As a kid, you know, just, just getting to know them and playing. playing uh, I just really got, got, got a real gist of just music in general. And... Uh, I think I, I first started really getting into it. The, a ukulele came around, and um, I used to. That, that was just like 
that's like four strings ukulele, right? Right. And um, back in Trinidad, they call them a quattro, because it's like a Venezuelan thing, like four strings, unos, dos, tres, quattro. So I, I remember playing a ukulele, and then uh, my great aunt, some guy was going around the island giving guitar lessons. And my great aunts, they, 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 they taught the whole, almost the whole island to, to play piano. Mm-hmm. And me and my brother, we didn't like piano because you'd go, go for piano lessons and as soon as you hit a bum note, they would hit you on the freaking fingers with, a, with the, 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 the sharp end of a ruler. So hmm. we decided not to do that. But my great aunt, a guy was going around the island teaching pia- uh, guitar and she says, Tony, you want to take a get, you want to pay, pay for guitar lessons for you. So I went for one lesson, and I mean, I, that's when I realized it's just an extension of the uk- of the, the ukulele. <laughs> and the guy showed the whole class, you know, about 15 people in the class. He showed us all, you know, your, your, your C chord, your open C, your basics, open G, and blah, blah, blah. Then we had to go home, and two days later come back and to, to, to you know, to, for, for the next lesson. But I went home, and for some weird reason, I... I I can figure it. I can analyze it. I I, I learned to play open C. Mm-hmm. Then I learned C on the up the fretboard and, and all these different inversions of C. <laughs> so when we went back for two days later, we go back for the for, for the second lesson, and he's going, "Okay, class, play that open C," and everybody's like clunking and clunking and clunking. And I, and I just had this attitude. I stood up and went, "What position do you want it, man?" <laughs> Up way up here on the twelfth fret, and uh, just I was just hot dogging. So right away I just went to my great aunt and went, "Don't waste your money with me. I'm okay." So that was the only guitar lesson I ever took in my life. So you mastered the guitar after your first lesson. Well, it's not just master; it's, it's master to a point, but just just being able to analyze and figure it out, you know. Right. And and I could always uh, imply like whatever I hear, I can find it for some weird reason on on, on the fretboard. I just <coughs> I figured out it's just like change your finger in, blah blah blah, and uh, so <coughs> it came as a piece of cake for me. So you got pure, perfect pitch, and you can basically pitch any note you want on the guitar. Exactly. You know, and then as I say, like no, just knowing that whatever chords you hear, like just um, it doesn't have to be like bam 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 bam. It can be bam bam one five and then one, and just just find it and. And remember the fingering, that's the main thing to her. Do you play guitar? Oh, yeah, I'm a guitar player also, yeah. Well, so you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's just, yeah. So it's just one of them things. And I mean, I I, I kind of got into it from there and just went went with it. And, uh, you know, the, the strange thing is the, the same feeling I got that first time I played a guitar and went, wow. It's the same feeling I get now. Of just oh, I mean, I just it's seriously it's just, and I mean it's it's just a feeling of I don't know, I just I'm in heaven, man. You're very happy to play that guitar every oh, night. Oh, it's it's therapeutic now. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just can't. I just look forward to it. It ain't like, I mean, I've so, so in Trinidad we never had much time. Uh, you have lots of spare time, you know, because it's summertime all year round and uh, lots of spare time. So we, of course, we had. Of course, I put in my time of. You know, woodshedding and sitting in a room for 12 hours, doing you know just developing the fingers or whatever, done that and uh, then so I put in my time with that. But but now it's like it's more of a, as I say, it's just refreshing, man, just to get your mind off things and focus and concentrate and not be a thinking machine too much, you know. So. How old are your uh, fenders you use? You know, I'm not a big. Uh, I'm a big collector. I'm, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I just picked up a, a, a. Don't tell anybody this, man. A Gibson SG, man. <laughs> <laughs> Gibson SG. So, SG, yeah. I just uh, because for some weird reason, I mean, I started when I first came to Can to, to, to Toronto in uh, the early '80s. I started. I got thrown into this situation. Somebody told me go on Afro and learn. Two hours of Jimi Hendrix material, and uh, they would guarantee me this uh, enormous amount of money. And I thought, hey, who is this Jimi Hendrix guy? Because I, I really wasn't. I didn't. I never like. Didn't like Jimi when I first heard him mm-hmm. in Trinidad. I just thought this was like just noise and loud, and I wasn't. I 
wasn't into that type of stuff ever. And then I got thrown into it. So everybody always thinks I'm a strat cat. I've always had strats since then. And, I mean, of course, the other acoustic guitar and blah, blah, blah. And I even got endorsed by um, PV. Mm -hmm. uh, they made a, a, a guitar for me and to my specs, my liking and stuff. But uh, just about three months ago, you know that A chord you play right up by the nut with the three fingers? Mm -hmm. That And you, you play the, the, the low E, the, the, the open E, the open A, and then you, you press those three strings and then you have the, the open E up on the top, right? Right. I couldn't. I haven't played that chord for like <laughs> for about 15 years really? until I pick up this SGD and I went, "Hey, this freaking chord has been it's been evading me." So I just where did that chord hide from you? Yeah, it's been hiding, man. It's been hiding out from me. So I pick up this SGD because the neck is so much fatter than the strat, and my right. fingers are pretty long. So hmm. and. That was one thing, and I, I just really love. Uh, I love big, wide necks. Don't get me wrong. I'm, st I, I'm, st I still love strats. I mean, they're definitely unique, and I'm, you know, I, I mean, nothing sings like a strat, especially for. I mean, you can get so many different tones, subtle, subtle screaming, whatever. But right. the SG is, is is a nice addition. Yeah, I like it a lot. Plus, it's got humbuckers, pickups, humbucking pickups. And humbuckers are nice. Yeah. Yes. Really big and fat and warm. And also, I mean, the, the other thing I noticed since I've had it is um, no springs. So, you know, like right. like Gibson guitars, uh, the, 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 the notes ring true, I find, you know. It's just a different style. It's just some, something different for me to explore my musical, you know, abilities with anyway. So. If you don't mind me asking, how do you keep your guitar tunes? Well, with the strats, I mean, the, the, as I say, like the springs, they always have a, a bit of a tension and... And and playing with whammy bars and stuff. Do you know. always adjust Somewhere. your springs? Yeah, I kind of adjust it. I like the bridge floating mm -hmm. a little bit, so you can get that that, that vibrato effect, right? So I like that. Uh, uh, I, I, this is the other thing. I, I, when I started playing the uh, SG live, there was no tuning problems. You know, you play like a whole freaking set, and uh, I mean, you, uh, occasionally you check them to, to make sure, but they wouldn't go out of whack. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I've been uh, I've been called a strat assassin, <laughs> a strat strat stalker. <laughs> I mean, I I, I crucify them, man. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm hard on guitar, so I think for me it was just a perfect thing. I I, I need to get to that at least one, right? From for my set, you know, that I can that I can endure <laughs> the roughness, the wildness, so. What, you, you play strats or? I, I play three strats and Gibsons and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gibson Les Paul, standard. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, you see the other thing with, with Les Pauls, love the sound. It's pretty, I mean, it's a big fat sound and it's really good for like more raunchy stuff or, I mean, whatever, you, but, but it really lends itself to that. But, uh, I, you know, I find with, with strats, the. So much more, so more, so much more unique. You can get different tones. And the thing with Les Paul is, they're so damn heavy, man. Holy mm -hmm. shit! I'm just a skinny runt, man. So I, I try to save my, save myself. I don't have to worry about, it. especially the way I play. Like I, I like to jump around and stuff. Whatever right. the feeling entails, right? So sometimes I roll around on stage, jump, do all kinds of stuff. So Les Paul is a little too heavy for me. Mm -hmm. so that's why the only reason I chose the SG2 is pretty yeah. And your image is great with the Fender anyways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always, you know, everybody's got their own individual look. You know, yeah. Fender. I really, I really, I'm really, I really love, love struts myself. I'm a kind of guy, you give me a piece of wood with one string on it, I can make it talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm kind of... I ain't too picky. I, my guitars are like my man. Yeah. All kinds, all sizes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I like them light. The lighter, the better for me. As a matter of fact, I just picked up a, a long and McQuaid in Toronto. Mm -hmm. and a, a sale on with Fender Squires, Squires Strats. And uh, the guitar tech, the guy who, who, one of the guitar repair guys, he um, called me and says, man, they were so, a hundred bucks for these Squires. And, and he's a guitar tech, so he knows his stuff. So he ended up uh, 
calling me down. He, he bought he bought three or four. Really. And he set them up, and they were all good. And because we're good friends, he said, "Yeah, I've, I've won." It's got your name written all over it, man. It's the lightest guitar I've ever played. Stays in tune and just just a real true Fender Strat. Because you know, lots of times, especially with squires and stuff, which I find is different with with the humbuckers or like with with your Gibsons and stuff. Like you, you got to play through a few of them sometimes you mm-hmm. know, to, to to find one that first of all feels right. Or just got that sound. So this choir I got, man, is my, my favorite. My between that and uh, and the SG, I'm 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 in heaven. Change the subject there for a second before yeah. before we finish the interview. You play with David Bowie also. How did yes. David Bowie find you? David Bowie found me. He was uh, he was touring across Canada from east to west with a, a, a group called Tin Machine, and. Uh, he was in Montreal one night, coming to Toronto the, the following night. And while he was doing a sound check on stage, uh, he saw one of my videos of, of, of a video for a song called Midnight Blues. On much music? Uh, yep, much. It was much. It was music plus. Okay, music plus. He was in Montreal, right? Okay. So, so, yeah. So he uh, he saw this. He saw me playing and heard his stuff and and, and flipped out. Got his people to call my people. Left a couple of backstage passes, tickets to the show, and asked me to come back and meet him and blah blah blah. So I went and met him that when he was in Toronto the next night, and uh, we hooked up since that. Next thing, about a month later, he called me to play on his album, uh, Black Tie White Noise, hmm. which I did. And uh, he wasn't touring exclusively; he was just doing. He did the talk show circuit like Jay Leno. Right. Uh, David Leno and stuff. So he asked me to do all that stuff. So I did all that stuff with Boy. It was it was a hoot, a real blast, man. You have a long career, and you still got well, a long career ahead of you. Oh yes, yes, yes. The future is bright. Well, with the, with the new the new band, I mean, like I I took a little time off I, after the first two Wild T CDs came out in the early eighties. Uh, I kind of just stuck around. I, I I got rid of my management and record label and. Decided to just stick around Toronto and not tour, and uh, it was so lucrative that uh, I mean I was making so much money. I thought, man, you know, I'm to hell with this touring stuff. I'm just gonna relax. And then I got into also um, acting and mm-hmm. jingles and doing a whole bunch of other activities in Toronto besides playing, actually, and studio work and stuff. And until about four or five years ago, I met Gunther, who is my bass player. Mm-hmm. And he came to to join the play in the band. The band was uh, the Tony Springer band. You know, we weren't doing like we we probably do about two, three Wild T songs, which is all like cover stuff: James Brown, Slam Family Stone, some Bob Marley, Stevie River, and stuff like that. And then Gunther, uh, we decided to like sign a contract and rehash Wild T. Mm-hmm. So here we are right now, and life is good. We go to Europe like two, three times a year. We 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 kind of cut it down lately in the last while because it's been so hectic. And, mm-hmm. uh, but Germany, Belgium, Holland, France, Switzerland, Austria. That's where we go. And, uh, well, next time you come down to Nova Scotia, I gotta go check you out. Yes. Well, we are. We were, you know we just get, got back from out west yesterday, and uh, we were supposed to to come to to Nova Scotia for a week and a half, but I think we're gonna do it in the late late summer sometime. So, because I really, I mean, I there's so much music down down east. I mean, people, it's, it's a passion, you know. And there's I find it's really great musicians I've met over the course right. from down east, and I, I always always love coming and playing for down easterners. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, Tony. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Okay, my friend. Good luck and uh, nice talking to you, Jason. And yeah. hopefully we'll uh, get to jam sometime, man. You that, never know. That'd be great. I'd love that. And you never okay, know. Okay, brother. <laughs> see if we can make it happen, man. We will see. <laughs> I talk to you in the okay. future. Bye bye. Okay, brother. God bless. Bye bye. You too.